Hey, Saran, congratulations on the new deal. Thank you. Uh, we know you're a big guy on special teams. Um, we haven't gotten to speak with many of you since the game in Kansas City. was hoping if you could give some insight into what happened on that kickoff at the end of regulation. Um, there was a lot of things in that game, you know, we could fix or whatever. But uh, I just tell you like this, you know, that, that I mean, it's in the past, and there's a lot of things that we can go back and recorrect or whatever and restructure. But um, you know, something in the past, you know, it's just something I really don't want to get into or whatever. But it's a lot of game. There's a lot of things from that game that we could we could correct and you know help the outcome of that game for us to win the game. I understand that. Can you um, just from a, a general standpoint, can you take us through? the mechanics or the operation of things on every kickoff in terms of who you as the kickoff team are, are communicating with and, and where everyone is just, just so we understand from an, a, a every single time standpoint, what usually goes on. Oh, kickoff. I mean, we're like a pack of wild hyenas. <laughs> that's what, that's how I can describe it. I mean, we know what the job is, but I, us as a, a unit on that kickoff team, man, it's just like we're all hungry. And uh, the thing with that, it, it comes with a lot. You know, you got to know, you know, who beside you and all that stuff. You got to know, who put the, you know, who about to attack you and all that stuff. But it's always schemes to everything or whatever. But it, with, with the unit that we have on our kickoff team, uh, we're pretty dangerous. Appreciate you. Congrats again. Hey, Saran, Adam Benini, Channel 2. I, I, just to follow up on what John asked, can you at least characterize whether that was communication-based or execution-based? In other words, can you confirm the decision was to, to kick away and go for the touchback there, or was there supposed to be something different, or was there a, was the message lost somehow, I guess is what I'm asking. Um, I, like I said, it was a lot of communication uh, from the whole game. You know, that not just that, uh, I just feel like, us as a team, you know, it's a lot of stuff we could fix in the game to win, you know. How much, I mean, you sign a new three-year deal, you've obviously made a big impact. Uh, how much lingers from that game and how much of a feeling maybe of unfinished business is there looking forward? That's always unfinished business. Not from not that, just that game, you know. I feel like from every game that we lost or whatever, um, from the previous years, prior to that game, or whatever, but that's another reason why, you know, I'm back, you know, we have unfinished business, and uh, the guys here knows we have unfinished business, and we know what we have to do. Obviously, things get pretty emotional, pretty heated after a loss like that. Uh, in the weeks that have followed, I mean, looking back on it, how do you reflect on what happened in, in Kansas City and maybe what it says about you overall as a team as you try and move forward now? I don't, you know, us as a team, we don't look at the outside. We don't we don't worry about what other people say about us, you know, say we this, that, and the third. Uh, we know we got here. <laughs> you know, we know what we do inside this building and we keep our business here and we keep their brotherhood here, you know. I mean... Like everybody say, I mean, it's it's us against the world. And at the end of the day, I don't care what, we don't care what people say outside. We know what we have to do. All right, Teron, thank you. Congratulations on your contract. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Saran, you mentioned in one of those answers just kind of why you want to be back, your goals looking forward. So what are you kind of hoping to do now that you've got these three years set up with the Bills? And what were those conversations like of why you want to be here? reason I want to be here is because it's like it's more of a family than just, you know, a football team. You know, each other, we lean on each other. You know, we lean on each other when we're down. We lean on each other when we're up. We lean, on each other. we lean on each other when we lose. We lean on each other when we win. And I think that's what makes our team so strong. Uh, most guys, you know, come into this game and they're thinking about themselves or whatever. And I feel like you know, that's the wrong mentality to have when you have a strong team, you know, 
or whatever. And that what makes a strong team is when you bond together like that, from the coaching staff to the staff upstairs down to, you know, the janitors that walk through the hallway, you know, like we all treat each other the same, no matter the pay budget, no, no matter the captains on the team, no matter the head coach, the, the assistant head coach, we don't treat nobody different. And uh, that's one thing. That's that's another reason why I, I want to be here. You know, I, I don't want to go nowhere else and have to relearn, you know, new this, new that. You know, everybody knows everybody here. We know when to talk to each other. We know when to leave each other alone. We know that when to give each other spaces. But one thing together, one time, one thing I can tell you, we stick together. We don't break off anytime, you know. When did you start to feel that when you were on the team? Uh, I say we we actually, we feel it inside the building, but us as teammates, we actually hang out outside the building. You know, we do stuff together. You know, we know each other's families, we know each other's wives, girlfriends, kids, uncles, <laughs> nephew, whatever you want to call it. You know, we don't shy away from learning our teammates or whatever. And, and I learned that, you know, a couple years back, you know, uh, as a young player or whatever. Uh, there was a lot of stuff I had to learn when I got here. But one thing that I, I, I caught on really fast was like the family base here, you know, even come from different countries, different cities, different towns, different backgrounds, you know, just being here, everybody's mentality is to love each other or whatever. And that's one thing that you got to have in, in the room to win. Like, you, like if you got to know, you got to know your teammates. You got to know who's up and down. You got to know his, his downfall. And you got to know when he needs to be picked up or whatever. And that's one thing about our teammates. We pick up each other. When you described um, special teams in particular as a pack of hyenas, is that something you guys usually say? Or is that something you just said today? No, nah, I, I don't think it's, it's nothing that uh, we usually say. Uh, but... Uh, our mentality, the reason why I don't say like a pack of lions is because, you know, sometimes lions shy away from things. Hyenas don't care. And uh, like, we don't care who you got. We don't care what this, that, and the third. I just feel like all special team units, we're definitely unselfish. We don't care about who got the most tackles. We don't care about who got the most, you know, this and that and the third. We don't care about who the fastest. At the end of every tackle, you see one thing. One guy made the tackle, the other, our other teammates picking him up, cheering him on, and telling him to go make another. Because once you do that, you win games. And you win friends with that. You, you win life. Because life is all about giving to others. It's not all about what you can get out of something. Because once you give to others, the best of everything comes back to you. You know, the man above see all that. So. That's one thing I could just say about our special team unit. Uh, it does a pack of hyenas. We don't care. We don't care what it is. Like it's time to go get it. Thanks. Hey, Saran. Uh, thank you for taking some time today. Congratulations on the new deal. Um, you know, as you were making this decision, I'm curious. Like, you know, last three years you spent with Keith Barwell. Um, he's obviously now in Jacksonville. Did that impact your decision at all? Did you, has your relationship with Matthew Smiley impacted it? Take me through your decision-making process and you know the changes there at, at special teams coordinator. No change at all. Uh, he, he, he far well, great coach, outstanding coach. Congratulations to the new deal, the new job in Jacksonville. You know, taught, he taught me a lot or whatever, especially from a guy that been in the NFL or whatever, but there's no drop off there. You know, the staff here did a great job of, you know, putting those guys together, you know, and what's crazy, you know, Matthew Smiley, he picks up, he Farwell, when Farwell was down, and Farwell picked up Smiley, you know, when Smiley was down, and they instilled that into their unit, pick each other up. So that will, that would that would not be no drop off there, and 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 I'm pretty sure the staff here got full confidence in Matthew Smiley, and as I do, you know, Smiley been here since I got here. He been here since day one, or whatever. And as he he, he tells me, take everything with a grain of salt, you know, when times are hard, um, but when times are up, you know, you still 
go hard or whatever. Like, oh, uh, he's a great coach and he didn't been in every situation and he's know how to get out of every situation. I feel like Matthew Smiley is a great coach. Um, and uh, looking forward to, you know, keep playing for him. And that's another reason why, you know, I love being here is because he's more than a coach. He's more, he's more like a friend. He teaches his game and he actually, you know, picks you up, you know, and uh, I really, I congratulate him on the, you know, the new, the new job here or whatever. It was well earned and it was, you know, the job he was earned to as well. And um, I congratulate both of those guys. The respect that you have around the league, I mean, was obvious when the news broke about your resigning. Um, people, you know, Bills fans were sharing, not only Bills fans, but, you know, fans around the league sharing that one picture where there was three Kansas City Chiefs defending you on the one, the one kick or the one punt there. Um, what was that? What's the bit reaction been like from teammates, people around the league when you signed this deal? I mean, it's it's record breaking in a lot of ways. Uh I feel like it's more of a what is what what to what is to become, you know. Yeah, it's like yeah, I did what I did. I mean, in the respect, honestly, I I thank you guys for that. But I think it's for what is to become because I feel like a lot of people knows what I bring to the table for special team and uh, for the unit or whatever. But uh, you know. <laughs> that play alone right there, that showed me the respect that a team like that, Kansas City, has for, you know, has for me or whatever. And uh, that right there, um, I just, you know, that was a moment where I can share to, you know, where guys, you know, ask me about it all the time. Like, did that really happen? <laughs> yeah, it happened <laughs> or whatever. And, you know, what's crazy, I almost made the tackle. I was this close to making the tackle like this close if you go back and watch the film. But, you know, I don't I don't shy away from competition. And uh, if I had to relive it all over again, I would or whatever. And, uh, now, you know, I, I thank the fan base and I thank all the people that put that, that's, you know, congratulating me on the new, this, this new ordeal, but there's more to come because I have to earn this deal too as well, you know. Awesome. And final question for me, um, you know, respect your decision not to talk about it. I mean, the last 13 seconds, everybody that we've talked to and people that have done, you know, podcasts and such, Taiwan was on one recently. He didn't want to get too deep into it, but I guess maybe not going into the play, but just the decision as a, as a team to not talk about it, you know, where does that come from? Because, you know, the fan base as a whole, I mean, I still is kind of burning the, the, the curiosity about what happened on that final play? Well, be curious. <laughs> we, don't have to, we don't have to discuss anything with the outside world if we don't want to, you know, and we don't, and you know what's crazy? We don't even discuss it with each other. That was a play that happened back then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we moved on from it. There's a lot of things in that game that we could have did differently to, you know, get the outcome of that game. And that's one thing that, that it, the staff do here. They put together a team, not just ball players. They put together personality people. You know what I'm saying? They have great personalities. And that's one thing I love about my teammates. We ain't got to talk about it. We more of a being about a team. And that's that's something that we, we you know, I'm going to say it right now. We're not going to talk about it. If that happened already, it is what it is. And we will not share information about that. Or then we'll keep it inside this building. But that's in the past, it's more to come. Um, and, you know, just not gonna do it. Saran, thanks so much, uh, congrats again. Hey Saran, uh, congrats and thanks for taking some time here. Um, was curious because your, your first few years, you were just kind of used all over the place. You started at safety, kind of got used or you were a linebacker coming out of college and then going through nickel and boundary corner what was it like not really finding a home on defense and having to have the special teams kind of carry you throughout uh it, it was never about me it's still not about me it's more about the team man what 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 helps the team win you know uh coming into this ordeal i mean like still to now, like I still don't think that I'm gonna have a, you know, 
a one position thing. <laughs> and it's cool with me. I just have to, you know, prepare different in the offseason, you know. Uh, I have to train a little bit more harder, you know. I have to go a little bit more harder. But like I say, like, this is, this is my job. And um, whatever my coach staff and my teammates need for me to do, I don't care if I got to get down uh, on the defensive line, <laughs> I'll do it. I got to gain a couple pounds to do it, I'll do it, you know. And you know what's crazy? The staff knows if they need me to do it, <laughs> I'll do it. So uh, that's what I love about, you know, being here. Like, it's, it's not all about me. It's not about me. It's about my team. And whatever position they need me to play, I just go do it. Coming up through your rookie deal, obviously you had to prove yourself on on special teams and everything like that. Uh, now signing a deal like this with as much emphasis as they put on special teams here in Buffalo, which is kind of unique for the rest of the NFL. Um, what is it like now kind of transitioning into more of a leadership role when you have to be the guy for the rest of your teammates? Because obviously things, things are going to get a little bit younger. There's going to be some more turnover. That's just how it but as a special teams? Um, I keep the mentality. I don't think too much about it. I don't think about, I don't think too much about uh, all the little other stuff that I think that I have to do to, you know, do this now and that. And the third, uh, I just think about the task ahead. I know what I have to earn or whatever. Yeah, I got a contract, but like I said, I still have to earn this contract. You know, this is not the end of, this is not the end of this deal. Like I got it all, you know. Uh, I have to show this staff that, um, I can, you know, lead. I can lead, and I feel like they know I can lead, and they trust me to lead or whatever. And uh, I thank them for that. And um, that's one thing that I feel like I can do. You know, I, I am a leader. And and not even saying just because I got this new deal, I'm going to be more of a leader. I feel like even, you know, back in the past years before this, you know, two years, three years back, I feel like um, I always led with a mentality to just get the job done and to win. Because at, at the end of the day, we all just want to win. And uh, it's, it's, and and most people think leading is all about vocal. You know, I'm really not that much of a vocal guy. I'd rather lead by example or whatever. And what I have to do is, you know, show the guys the way of, you know, handling business and helping all helping the teammates, you know, around this, around this unit. And uh, that's one thing I think about. Uh, it's just not all about being vocal or doing that in the third, I feel like you can lead by example, you know, loving your teammates and showing them the way. Cool. Thanks, Saran. Hey, Saran. Um, you mentioned a couple of times just how close you are with your teammates. I was wondering, Levi Wallace, you know, he had that one year deal this year. Just what did you see him make of this past year specifically on the team? And I know he still has to figure out things, but just what did you see? Very humble, godly, man. So it's so much words that I can, you know, give Levi that, that, that most guys don't even know, you know, uh, Levi, Levi is the guy of himself. He, he's definitely, you know, one of the guys that I lean on when it comes to, you know, learning, you know, corner, you know, his, his IQ is very high, you know, uh, and people, you know, a lot of people don't really understand Levi. They don't understand where he comes from. They don't know his background. And, you know, they don't know much about Levi. But Levi, Levi is a strong guy mentally. He's very strong guy mentally. From being where he was drafted to, you know, from being, you know, losing his father, you know, uh, Levi, Levi don't, he don't worry about a lot. He leans on God or whatever, he's a big man of faith. And uh, that's one thing I lean on him towards too, cause we, you know, cause sometimes, you know, I think otherwise, but he just, you know, tell me to give to God and lean on God and everything will work out. And like it did, it, it did work out. So with Levi, I hope, I hope everything works out, works out for the best. And I hope that he get what he deserves because he deserved it all, you know, especially with a guy being that faithful to God, you know, and um, handling his life business, you know, teammates, you know, family, whatever it is, Levi, he handled it, he put, he put himself second, you know, prior to anything. Like he, he, he's a, he's a great friend, he's a great brother. And uh, I thank him for that, you know, um, and anybody else that meets him, I'm pretty sure they'll figure out really fast that 
Levi's is a guy that they can always depend on and can go to about anything. So, thanks. Congrats again. Hey, congrats on the deal. Um, I was curious, how soon did you realize that the, you know, the Bills wanted you back? Were those conversations like start at the end of the season, or how did this kind of come together? Uh, I mean, it's something that you never know, especially in this business or whatever. Uh, I, I pretty much let my uh my agent handle everything, but um, even before this, you know, before the deal or whatever, you know, I just knew the people here, you know, they trusted me or whatever. And uh, that's one thing that I can say that, you know, the, the people that trust me or whatever. And uh, like I say, I, like, I, I, I didn't know. I mean, I was hoping to be back or whatever. And uh, it came true, you know, thanks to the man above. But uh, I, I can't really say like when I knew I was going to come back, but I was praying that I came back and my family wanted me to come back because they knew it was going to be the better opportunity and they like the staff here. So um, I'm glad to be back, I, you know, so I love it. For sure. And then I was curious, you're part of this 2018 draft class that has had like so much success. I mean, it's it's an incredible class when you look back on it. I mean, do you think, do you guys like talk about that? Do you think about it? Like, I guess what's it, I don't know, just your thoughts on being part of the group and the success that you guys have had. Hey, shout out to Bean. <laughs> shout out to Bean. <laughs> hey, he put it together. Hey, that's one thing that uh me and you know some of the guys talk about Tremaine, Josh, Harrison, you know, even uh what's the name they got traded to the uh the Browns, you know, it was a lot of guys that he drafted that year and that's still here, you know, and much success, like crazy success, even down to the free agents like Levi Wallace, like man, it's a hell of a class. And uh I'll put this class against anybody, <laughs> even down to you know, people that went to other teams, but this class. And then being put together in 2018, I feel we're them boys. <laughs> That's all I can say. Is it cool to be a part of that, to know, like, you're part of that group that came in and kind of set the tone in that sort of oh, thing? Oh, for sure. And one thing that, I, that they're doing a great job is keeping us together so we can continue to do what we do. And they know how we handle each other as friends and boys and, you know, how we go about our team. Because most of us on this team are drafted in the 2018 class. We are leaders. Mm -hmm. who lead by example and it ain't much to talk about and we know what we got to do and you got one hell of a one at a, at a quarterback <laughs> he that boy you know what I'm saying so Bean did a great job and the staff and not just Bean just everybody putting it together down to the coaches and everybody they did, they did their thing congrats again hey Saran congrats on the new deal um, the DB unit has played together for four or five seasons now. Can you just talk about the bond that you all have in the defensive backs room? And is that consistency within the group rare to have in the NFL? I, I feel like it's more consistent with the coaches, with the coaches. They know, they know what kind of thing that you got to put together to have a unit, you know, and, and they don't, you know, bring in outsiders, outsiders. The coaching staff do a great job of developing their players, even if they come to, come in, you know, you know, and have to learn stuff. You know, that unit from the coaches to the guys upstairs to everybody that contribute in that unit, they know what they have to do to help out the other players. Like, it's not all about, you know, who's starting or who's the backup or who making the most money or this, that, and the third. One thing I can tell everybody, if you got a brotherhood and you got a unit that stay together, everybody's going to be happy at the end of the day. You win more games doing that. You can't, you can't, you can't be selfish in that group. And that group right there, it's a lot of, you know, selfish people in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, them, them, them guys are really like, it's, it's crazy how it works out. You got Michael Hyde, you got Jordan Poirier, them like the, the grandfathers, you know, they, 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 you know what I'm saying? They, they like the big dogs of the unit. Like, not, not saying they the big dogs, cause they don't feel like they're better than anybody, but they, they control everything. Like they know who's need, who need to be doing this or this and that. And I'm not even talking about 
on the field. You know, they know what it takes, you know, to pick each other up. And not just them, like you look around our whole DB group, you you got the older guys, you got the guys like me that came in 2018, and then you got the younger guys, you know. And all that stuff is fed down from the older, they they pass it down, you know. They pass it down to us, we pass it down to the young guys, they pass it down to the younger guys, young guys, you know, they tell us this and that. So we all got like this little one program in our mind to know like what we gotta do when we go into the game situation or what we got to do when we off the field or what we got to do, you know, when uh, when the COVID hit, you know, <laughs> we came together as one, you know, we knew what we had to do to keep this going and the coaching staff know what we got to do to keep this going. And when you got a great unit like this, you don't want to break that up. You don't want to spread it out because it won't be the same. And I feel like we've done a great job of keeping the unit together and playing one on four, four or five years together and plus more is to continue. It's going to be something awesome to do. Definitely. Thank you for taking the time and congrats again.